Hello, Sophie. Hi. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Good. Thank you for joining us. And so luckily, Mike spent a bit more time talking, so we won't keep you for long. But thank you for joining us. So just an introduction. So Sophie actually is currently in our leadership group coaching program with Mike, um, which is a quarterly planning um, program. So at the beginning of each quarter, we sit down and plan our goals for the for that quarter. And then even more importantly for ADHD is we meet up weekly and make sure that the plan, you know, we're on track on the plan. And then we have the monthly month mastermind where members get to talk about any obstacles in their plans, any kind of business issues. And because they're all so vastly gifted and knowledgeable, you know, it really benefits from all of that expertise. So, um, yeah, it's it's a great program. So, but Surf and I go back a while. You came to me for coaching. Do you remember, what, what were you originally hoping to achieve through the coaching? Um, I think it was just build my confidence and... Yeah, I think mainly, mainly that. Yeah, it, yeah. You, you've experienced quite a, um, I mean, I've seen you grow from, you know, I remember you kind of looking for the job, looking for a job. Um, I know you were very interested in, in the history, what you studied at university. Um, how did coaching kind of help you on the career path? Um, I think it helped it helped me understand more about what I wanted and what kind of job I wanted and um and the kind of um organization I wanted to work uh to, to work at. Um so it was really helpful. Um it it kind of it we went through um like personality traits things that I was good at um and that I, I mean heavily focused on like detail and um organization lots of like data um so uh yeah that was that kind of made me realize that going into like the museum heritage sector was something you know that I would be able to do because because one I loved it and um two I had the like the detail um the t detail oriented mind to kind of uh navigate navigate the work yeah and what you learned pretty quickly uh in coaching what we saw was what a natural leader you were do you remember um where you used to work uh in doing the those exhibitions we weren't <laughs> about I don't want to but there were some difficulties because you really cared about, I mean, you wouldn't think, you'd think that you caring is a good thing. It should be if you're in your job and you're looking after something, it's great that you care because it means that those things are going to be very well looked after. You're going to do your job well. But you came, there were some challenges though, weren't there, um, that you faced kind of probably for the first time navigating that type of thing in the workplace. How did coaching help you get through those obstacles? Um, well, I think uh, learning about my values um, was basically the starting point because I realised what motivated me, why I wanted to do things. Um, and very quickly in, in a previous job, I realised that my values did not align um, with the organisations. And I basically spent the whole time fighting mm -hmm. for uh, the safety of the collection of, of the objects, basically. And coaching helped me because Steph you brought me back down to earth and you basically helped me realize that there's nothing that I can do you know to change other people's views um in in a wider organization like I, I tried it didn't work there's no point in you know doing it again and again um it helped me kind of just let go and just do what was needed um but it then made me realize that, that I could work in that environment long term um and the coaching kind of made me made me think more about what environment I did want to work in mm. um and it 
yeah not, not, not and also kind of I guess how you wanted to work because obviously you know the challenges were you had a certain standard you wanted to adhere to you you wanted and, it, and but everyone else needed to also step up in order to have that standard met and that was the standard that needed to be met in terms of your values you, if you're going to do something particularly given the what was at stake we did a lot of that yeah um but you weren't able to get everyone on board and that was very frustrating for you um I remember yeah you were kind of had then adjusted your standard because the frustration was getting so great and we see that yeah and you then adjusted the standard and made sure okay I'll do what is achievable I'm not I'm going to adjust my expectations because that's where the frustration was really growing and causing a lot of difficulty for you because you couldn't really push through it because of the you know the, the what was in place um, but you were able you were able to get through it without a lot of da- you know it was really hard for you um, because you're very frustrated. It is very frustrating when you care so much um, and you know what's at stake, and other people aren't helping you, yeah. other people you need to do. So yeah, you managed to then. So you thought, okay, well, you do set really high standards. You're very good at what you do. So in terms of moving on, what did you then decide to do? Well, it. I decided to go out on my own, start my own business. And it meant that I could then create the rules and I could, um, so I could adhere to professional standards, which most organizations do adhere to. Um, Some obviously don't, Um, but it, (laughs) it, um, it just meant that I could, I could be, um, I could have like an e like I wouldn't have the stress of like um the mental and physical stress of the previous job where I was just fighting. I could actually do what I enjoy doing, like just do my job and actually make a difference. Um and it actually made me realize. So the initial reason why I wanted to start on my own is because I wanted to spread the awareness of um collections care and how like what is what is the basic need of of objects of particular objects and how can how can you you know spread the word with like museums um typically museums will you know have some standards in place already so that's so that's good but with I do a lot of work with like private collectors that actually some of them don't really know kind of what um what the basic storage um uh, environment for objects are or um and actually I was really excited that I could basically hopefully spread spread the word um and help people understand how to look after their own objects um helping preserve them through through time so yeah and how does it feel compared to you know uh, before you know in that workplace where it sounded like yeah all that energy was kind of going it was you were expending it, but it wasn't you weren't getting anywhere. So yeah, I mean, in terms of your mental health, your motivation, how are you now? How do you describe it now? I literally I wake up every day and I'm like, I am this is like I am so lucky. I get to do exactly what I love and I get to set the rules, set the boundaries, and you know, I just get so much pleasure from it, which is really lucky. I know that it's so lucky to be able to say that in, in, in your work. Um, and it is without the coaching, it literally would not have happened. Like I I wouldn't, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't be where I am today without coaching. Um, it really has, like it, it, it's basically, yeah, helped me get here. So I really appreciate everything you've done. (laughs) Yeah, well, it's again, it, it is a pleasure. And, you know, in terms of what you do, like not many people, ca- like we talked about, they don't care as much as you do. And also there's something that you're doing now as well. The books would be great if you just share with everyone, you know, particularly what, what you're doing now with the, the, you know, the books and the jewellery and yeah. So I'm also, so part of my business is like um, acquisitions. So I like help people build collections. Um, and I actually have a collection of um, and uh, of Victorian and Edwardian jewellery and Victorian bindings. Um, 
uh, which which I'm selling. And um, with each purchase, I provide like a care guide of like how to how to make sure you um, you know look after this properly. And um, basically, I, I want to be able to like have a long term conversation with with any um, any buyers. Um, so that if they have any questions about how they need to look after something, I can, you know, I can help them. Um, because I just think it would be, it would be great to start, like, start going with, like, trying to um, get the information out to, like, to, to people, to anyone that wants to buy it, anyone, anyone who wants to get um, into collecting anything or is, you know, fascinated in having um a historic piece of jewelry um it it's just it would be really exciting to kind of share my knowledge that way as well um and hopefully share a passion with someone and build a community of people that just love history historical objects and yeah looking after things yeah and you're on and you're on the path to that you're this is what you're working on and you know you can see and people can I'm sure can see you know, how ignited you are now, you know, you talking about what it is you love. So be, before you go, it'd be great if you just uh, let everyone know. So what's your website and, you know, and uh, I, I guess in terms of also the books, I know you want to start maybe doing talks um, around books that have been forgotten, female authors, just a little bit on that before. Yeah. You... Um, so I, I would, I would be really interested in doing in doing talks where I can um shine a light on authors that potentially have been for, not forgotten but you know not not celebrated um uh, given their worth um so I'd like to organize little, little events where I kind of bring a selection of books along and talk about the authors um and hopefully um you you know find a new author that you're interested in um so yeah that's again another way to kind of just like spread the spread the knowledge and love sort of thing yeah which is and that's I guess again the power of ADHD coaching with you was to help you find your mission and give you that kind of confidence and I guess the structures as well we've got the leadership program for instance helping you form those goals and and staying on track and hopefully I'll throw your backpack over the wall a little bit sometimes to, to, to be able to stretch yourself to these things. But yeah, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure to coach you and to see you grow. Um, and yeah, it's, that's, that's the ultimate goal, isn't it? To be able to, and you know, to do what you love, do what you love, yeah. right? Because for ADHD, authentic interest is our fuel. So if we're not, you know, in a place where, you know, we're in, thoroughly doing something we're interested in if our values aren't aligning there's the fuel's just not there and yeah the workplace it's not good for, but it's certainly not good for you so yeah I, I'm very excited and uh yeah do put uh let us know what what's the name of your company it's Milner Collections yes and so maybe just put the website in the chat for everyone oh yeah oh okay yes yeah have a look yeah but uh yeah, so Sophie's part of our leadership program. So we're in Q4 of this year. Uh, obviously, 2025 Q1 will start January. But yeah, she smashed the goals, absolutely tore them apart last quarter. That's what we do. And yeah, it's 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 lots. Of, we have lots of fun too, don't we? It is lots <laughs> going of fun. To the, going to the club with Mike was also a lot of fun. <laughs> Not Literally so the highlight of my life. I know, it's that's amazing. You know, I know, right? It's <laughs> so like, cool. This is what we do at the leadership program. We, you know, go to these <laughs> The perks, the perks. Yeah. No, that was just very lucky. But uh, thank you, Soph, and um, have a good night. Thank you so much for, you know, raising awareness of HD Coaching, and I'll see you soon. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.